Okay, so we're on to scene six today. Um, I'm still doing this uh, unit, trying to figure it out. Um, I did plug in the mic into my computer, and I don't know if that makes any difference or not. I went to the support page, and they told me to plug it into the computer. So I did it to see if it makes any difference. I don't know. My phone seems to have a good sound quality just with the videos by itself, so I don't know why this mic is here. You know, I think this is just a, some fancy TikTok uh, contraption that they invented. Tell you the honest truth. You know, I don't really care for it. I'll be happy to go back on my PC, really, because uh, I get that mic in the next couple of days, and then I can edit my videos and do that, which I like to do. Um, it's great, because this is how God has it. Um, and uh, no matter what, as long as we're sharing a message and giving it out there, that's the most important part. So thank you for joining me in my studio. <laughs> I don't think it's much of a studio. All right. Scene six. By the creation of humanity in God's image. His purpose is made to converge onto this earth and mankind. In this scene, it is further contracted to one land and one nation. For we now see Abraham called out of his homeland of Chaldea, established in a land given by him by God, and the recipient of the promise of a seed in which all the families of the earth would be blessed. The land of promise, though considerably larger than modern Palestine or Israel, is really a very small part indeed of the earth's surface. Yet to the nation, which was descended from Abraham through Jacob, was shown God's favor. But you do, I know, of all the families of the earth, or of the ground, he told them through the prophet Amos. Amos chapter 3 verse 2. With them he made a covenant, and to them he gave his law. With them he established his priesthood. For them he appointed judges and chose kings. To them he committed his oracles and sent his prophets. By giving them his law, with all the, its attendant detail, God seemingly constricted his purpose still further, for he bound himself as a matter of supreme honor to remain true to that code which he had established whatever he might do in the future regarding his chosen people. He could not nullify or abrogate the law, which he made at Sinai. For that set the standard of his justice. Henceforth, he must not only be just, but be seen to be just by that standard. And the one who was to come as a savior must of necessity be able to demonstrate his ability to keep that perfect law. Otherwise, he would be no better than the rest. So he came to fulfill the law, Christ. Jesus Christ fulfilled the law completely and fully. Again, God's purpose was fully confined within the bounds set by his prophets, who went one after another made prognostications, which God in honor was bound to fulfill. How often do we read? that that may be fulfilled, which was declared by the Lord through the prophets, or words of similar intent. Of course, the prophet never spoke his own words, but those that were inspired by God's Spirit. Second Peter 1.21 God was continually setting himself limits within which his intentions must be contained. A supreme grandeur lies in this, for it shows that in every way God is master of his purpose. Yes, God seemingly made his purpose as hard as possible. A virgin was to conceive and bear a son. This son was to be born in a particular place. For Micah prophesied that the future ruler should come out of Bethlehem. Micah 5.2 To achieve this, God influenced the mightiest man in the world at that time, the Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus and caused him to pass a decree that all the world would be ruled should be which he ruled should be registered so a census took a census they still do that today we get census in the mail every year 
So that's still going on. It's a matter of control. So the higher uppers like to control, and this is how they do it. Uh, part of the part of it, anyway. Um, and caused him to pass a decree that all the world which he ruled should be registered. Yes, it was in response to this decree that Joseph and Mary were induced to make the very trying journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem at a time when Mary was about to bring forth her firstborn son. And it was the same decree that filled the inn with similar travelers, who being able to move more quickly could get there first. Yeah, and in, the, in that day, it was hard to travel. Of course, they had to have camels and horses or whatever they rode, uh, sheep. I don't know what they rode. But anyway, it took a long time, unlike today. Okay, scene seven. The, the scene now is one of light. Okay, shining at a time when one normally expects darkness. Shepherds watching over their flocks in the fields by night suddenly find themselves in the presence of a messenger of the Lord and engulfed in the marvelous light of the glory of God shining about them. Notice that this messenger does not speak to them from heaven as so often depicted on Christmas cards. Yes. <laughs> uh, but it is, but is actually standing by them and they are surrounded, enveloped by God's glory as he speaks. Fear not, for lo, I am bringing you an evangel of great joy, which will be for the entire people. For today was brought forth to you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord in the city of David. And this is a sign to you. You will be finding a babe swaddled and lying in a manger. Luke chapter 2, verses 10 through 12. Read it out of the Concordant Version, and you get the proper translation of it. You will be finding a great pot potentate. No, a prince. No, a prophet. No, a man. No, not even a man, but just a babe. Do you realize that at this point, the whole purpose of God is concentrated into a tiny newborn baby, helpless apart from its mother? Yes. And in spite of the words of Micah 5, 2 concerning Bethlehem, there was no place prepared, no place found except a manger for this wonderful birth. A virgin had conceived and a child had been born. A son had been given. The words of the prophets had been fulfilled. The true light had come to the people walking in darkness, yet its first flicker was seen in a manger and among the lower animals. As low as you can go, that's where his birth was. Transcendence. Okay, where am I now? Animals. Okay, I think that's the end of seven. Just give me a second here. I got this, these pages kind of messed up for a second. So take a look here. 12. Sorry. Scene nine. Okay, that was scene seven. Okay, right here. Here we go. All right. I, sh I guess I should get organized before I do this. Okay. So I'll continue here. Finish off uh, scene seven. And tomorrow we'll get into scene eight. Okay, and often though the angels sing in hearing hearts their words of joy, when will earth see its Savior King in Bethlehem's uncradled boy? Okay, truly the Son of God's love emptied himself when he came to this earth. As Paul tells us in Philippians 2, 7, he divested himself of all the greatness that he had previously and became not as nothing. But now he was to to go still further and humble, humble himself even unto death. Okay, so we'll go with scene eight tomorrow. Grace and peace. Have a beautiful Wednesday, uh, Thursday. It's Thursday, yes.